So it's really complementary of the human being that we would rather be needed than needy. I don't want to take care of myself. What's the point? I'm born with problems. Try to solve them. Thank you very much. What kind of plan is that? But if I can do something for you, if I can do something for the creator, hey, count me in. Well, why do you think today in particular, less people are driven to find purpose in their life? Is that true? Less people, I think. It feels like it. I mean, you, you could tell me that's not true, but. I, no, I think you're right that f fewer people are going to drop everything and run off to yeshiva and grow a big beard. Mm -hmm. But even, 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 even in, 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 let's say, you know, America or Israel, just people are, I think, more likely just, just zombing through life than maybe they would have been 50, 100 years ago and, and more. And that hasn't changed much. The silent majority is still silent. Mm -hmm. The question is what's happening in the, in the vocal community. So in the 60s, the vocal community was rebelling and rejecting and separating. But today's voice is people who are saying, uh, our lifestyle is not working, so we need a new lifestyle, not to go off and become something else. Not to isolate yourself into a... So now people are saying uh, values, purpose, uh, thinking about others, serving others. That's starting to make more sense than just running after my own success and, you know, psych the pop psychology, validate myself, love myself and myself. That's just sickening. <laughs> too much. Too much me. Too much me. It's Leave. A Leave me alone. <laughs> Enough. Also, I think everything that we choose in life is based on the um, on the cards that, gave, that that life gave us in terms of the knowledge that we have. Uh, it it it's what maps out our our options, our choice. So, given. I think what our generation, what you're describing, is that we're looking at the options of what and we see that there is no purpose to life uh, that is worth really pursuing there's nothing that really matters uh, or that is achievable um, so why not just focus on making our existence as comfortable and as secure and as pleasurable as possible just don't interrupt me let me have my Netflix on. Let me have my, my, my nice food. Let me go on vacations and just, um, to reduce the anxiety of facing even the possibility of doing something great, because what is there to do that is great? So Whatever you is, can't can blame them. You can't blame them, but it's only once you're, uh, revealed to Torah and Hasidus in a very, uh, clear correct convincing way that as a, an alternative is presented to you that then you can judge is this person up looking for a purpose or is he not then you can judge it properly if a person is exposed to this properly and then he says yeah but i'm not looking for a purpose that doesn't really happen i think what you're describing is happening from lack of knowledge uh, and that's why when we saw rabbi friedman's lectures we immediately knew that this we can't keep this to ourselves <laughs> there's something also very edgy about this like when we say to people we're not religious and we mean it and so religious people so the secular people are like what what are you talking about but you have a yarmulke but you have a this don't yeah. say you're not religious <laughs> stop with this nonsense and the religious people are also saying uh, they expect us to behave in a certain way or they have a whole package of how we should be uh, and when they see that we're not, so I say, yeah, that's fine. I'm not even religious. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're all, it's very edgy, but it, on the other hand, like the rabbi was, was explaining, it's very mainstream. It's connecting, it's separating all divisions. So we get to be, uh, one of another thing that is in our generation, at least in academia and art, where we came from, we like to be radical. Hmm. We like to do something that is different. We don't want to be just saying something safe and lovey-dovey and boring. comfortable. Also in politics, we go for the radical edges of politics because mm. at, at least you say something interesting. You have a vision. So we have a radical message here, but at the, at the same time, it's so 
relaxing, connecting, um, and true, familial. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> when you cut, when you when you meet the truth, it's relaxing. Even though you didn't study Torah your entire life, but you some somehow I knew that I recognized the truth. So one of for me one of the the, the most um, uh, powerful messages of Rabbi Friedman is that it's not me who needs anything. Yeah, I don't need to be religious. I don't need I don't need to do anything. I don't need this. I don't need to be born even. But who needs it? God, because God created me. God chose to 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 create me. So obviously, who needs who? Uh, that's why God gave me these talents, this character, this lifestyle, this background, this environment, this history, everything, all the story from my grandparents who escaped from the Holocaust and all, all the complex life story was all, uh, um, a, you know, the, the stage to, to, to grow him basically to, to, to make his voice be heard. So, and then I felt, okay, so I can make movies and I can, I can talk to people. So why don't I just use all of that for him? Hmm. And that, that's why I became really happy and relaxed. And I stopped pursuing for my Parnassa and for my acknowledgement. And for, I, I stopped being in competition with other filmmakers because right now, if I'm, if I'm serving God, then it's not me. It's not, it's the message that I bring is not my message. I don't have to be, I don't have to be stressed, stressed about it. And even now for me, it's not, it's not natural to sit in front of a microphone, but I do it for him. I, I know that it's for him. So it's much more relaxing. It's so fascinating what you're describing because you know, you go through life, you meet people that they, when they feel that they know their purpose or why they're here you could throw anything at them. Okay, they're human. There's obviously people fall and get back up, but there's something, there's a, just a way they navigate their life that is, like you're saying, with ease. And then the opposite, you find people that navigate life that whether they don't want to do their purpose or they don't even think about why am I here, and they're just, they seem very miserable. It's It's very fascinating. It's a compliment to the human condition. <clears throat> to say human beings are so needy and so fragile and so dependent and so miserable. Yeah, that's depressing. <laughs> it doesn't, it's not a compliment to the human being. Like we're, we're desperate little animals trying to survive. Nasty picture. But when you say, no, no, I'm just looking for the purpose of life. All of a sudden you sound like a philosopher, <laughs> but it's not, it's, it's an earthy visceral need. I got to know that I make a difference to somebody mm. because just for myself, because I like myself, that's, that's like a black hole in space. And like, that, it doesn't work. So it's really complimentary of the human being that we would rather be needed than needy. I don't want to take care of myself. What's the point? I'm born with problems. Try to solve them. Thank you very much. <laughs> what kind of plan is that? But if I can do something for you, if I can do something for the creator, hey, count me in <laughs> because I got nothing else to do. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here loving myself. That's sick. Although it's very popular. <laughs> Imagine when you cook, when you, when you cook dinner for yourself, you don't, you don't care. You just, you can eat popcorn for dinner. But when you have, when you, when your father comes or your mother comes, you want to right, make, make really dinner. Nice, right. So people like love to do for others. What, what advice would you give to someone who's watching this or listening and says, okay, that's great, but how do I find my purpose? It's a million purposes out there. And, and obviously I only have one, but how do I identify it and find it? Read the book. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. By the way, disclaimer, everyone watching, listening, go ahead and buy this book on learn can, Hebrew and read you can find it on your website. Amazon, Netflix, Amazon. everywhere. Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Not Netflix, yeah, but Amazon. Go to Amazon. I have a link in the show notes. Okay, read the book, but but practice. I, I want to give them a taste. Yeah, 
I'll try and make it as simple as possible, but it's, it, it's, a, it's a deep yet it's a simple point. Mm-hmm. Your purpose, your true, real, eternal purpose is not yours in the immediate sense because you didn't create yourself. So you're, you're the created uh, element, which means you were created for a, for a purpose. It's not something you need to look for or invent or come up with going to like, um, um, those psychologists to specialize on, uh, developing your career or your future and guidance and coaches. And let's try and find a purpose for you and see hmm. because you were created your purpose in a sense preceded you and is imposed on you. So there is a moment when you have to um, surrender to it. When you surrender to the fact that you were created and to the fact that your purpose was created for before you, you mm-hmm. and for you, then um, you become, um, you feel like a Jew, first of all, but in a sense, because you feel like, um, you're you're here to serve and you have and and you are you were con- you connect with god on an, on another level uh as as a created being mm. because we don't really experience ourselves as a created being we, we're like a fact already right we, we're a fact like i exist so yeah. and i'm the world yeah so. that's the starting point like there's so. something before me that had a plan for me like exactly it's, it's a w- weird feeling a little and but then makes total sense when you want when when you realize that the next stage is to ask what was his purpose so then i'm the result of his purpose and finding out his purpose is that's revealed in the torah that's revealed in the Midrashim, that's revealed in chassidus uh, and his purpose is is uh, a world that is godly, a world that um, doesn't hide him, but actually reveals him in his most uh, truest form, in the most intimate and authentic way that godliness can ever be expressed, more than it can be expressed uh, up above in heaven. Because actually, because the purpose is is to do with here, then the way he can be revealed here is more him than how he's revealed when he's alone before the seventh day of creation or when he's only with angels and in heaven. Uh, so my purpose is to uh, be a vehicle for the, for the revelation of God in this low, disturbed, uh, confusing, evil at times, dark world so bringing god down to earth is the purpose but how does each individual so okay so we all have to do mitzvot and we all have to but why me like what am i adding to the puzzle Mm -hmm. which piece of the puzzle Mm -hmm. is mine Mm -hmm. so for that you have to look at where where you find yourself where god put you so you're an anthropologist what do you do with that? You don't abandon it and go off looking for a purpose. That must, that must be the vehicle for you. So as an anthropologist, how do you bring God down to earth? As a filmmaker, how do you bring God down to earth? As a schlamazel and a loser, <laughs> how do you bring God down to earth? <laughs> Whatever you are, there's, that's where you need, that's where he needs you to be and that's where he needs you to do the mitzvah. Like, for example, a guy becomes observant, he's inspired, becomes observant after he's married for 10 years and has six children. And the rest of the family doesn't want to be observant. So he says, oh, I'm in the wrong place. I want to serve my purpose. I'm going to get divorced. No. <laughs> that happens so much. <laughs> you discovered your purpose after you were married. Take a hint. <laughs> God needs you to serve him with the same mitzvahs that everybody else does, but in your predicament. So no, you don't divorce your wife. You work with her and you work with your children and that is your purpose. It's so funny because when people try to make changes in their life, they, they, they sometimes think they found their purpose and they go and 
radically changed. I, I'm thinking in like yeshiva in high school, like you had guys that's called being like flipping out, like they're not yeshivish, and then all of a sudden the next day they're super yeshivish. They're learning for like ten more hours. What happened to them? It's never sustainable. They always <laughs> bounce. Yeah, they always crash. I've never seen it. It's it's some it's it's. I guess it speaks to your point of saying that like it's not a true change and. They're not supposed to change overnight like that, you know? You are where you're needed. You exist because you're needed, and you are where you are and who you are because that's how you're needed. So don't 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 go looking for a personality transplant. If someone watching who wants to bring God down, um, more on a macro level, would you say, you know, and, and everyone take this with a grain of salt, to try to mimic God as much as possible? Is that the goal? Because from what we understand, he's, he's perfect in every way. So if we try to be like him or, again, I, I'm saying this like, don't go ahead and like, if God, you know, he kills people, don't go kill pe killing people. Like, <laughs> that's why I'm saying like disclaimer. But ultimately like God created the world. So if you could create something to help the world, then go and do that, you know? Absolutely. That's one of the forms that, that uh, serving God takes. One is obedience. He told you to keep kosher, keep kosher. Don't argue with him. <laughs> That's a simple, fundamental. The other thing is mimic him. Be like him. Follow. God keeps Shabbos. Well, keep it with him. Don't leave him sitting by the Shabbos table by himself. <laughs> right. Hmm. So this is such a universal concept. And it is so unifying. No matter who I speak to, no matter who you who reads the book, it's the same message to every human being. You're not Jewish? Don't convert. Be what God needs you to be where he put you. So we're, we're like all in the same ship, even though one of us is the captain and one of us is the, uh, you know, the navigator and the other one. Is, but, but it's the same thing. We're all doing the same thing. Trying to get God down to earth. And interestingly, without changing the subject too much, the non-Jewish world is even more crucial. I mean, if you want to come down to earth, coming to Yerushalayim is not exactly down to earth. <laughs> it's the holiest place in the world. You know, That's not the earth. The earth is uh, the deserts and the jungles and the... Bring God there. Oh, now you're talking. And that's part of our responsibility. We receive the Torah, but we're not supposed to keep it to ourselves. So an, a message that you can inspire a guy in Meir Sha'arim who never thought that he's serving God, he thought he was pro getting God's protection for his well-being and for his own survival and for his heaven. For his heaven. And all of a sudden he's you know really inspired, like, no, I'm here to serve. And then on the other hand, I'm talking to a minister, a pastor, I don't know what, and he says, Do do you do you have you accepted the Savior? I said, actually, I'm not looking for God to save me. I'm looking to serve God. And he started to cry. He said, I never even thought of that. Well, yeah, does God exist to serve me? Save me, protect me, bless me, take me, keep me. <laughs> Enough already. What are you doing for him? So, and a minister, and then people in the jungles in, in, in New Guinea, same message, same inspiration. This is not divisive. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it.